producer of all three shows, Betsy Beers.
this stage, and um, so many you know, people in our, in our show, and I saw it on Grays and in private practice as well, that she'll f find something in an actor and dig for it. And uh, so the actors on Shonda's shows, whether you've heard of them before and seen them in 20 things over the years, or whether it's a brand new person who you didn't know before, she finds what's really underneath that person, what they have to offer that um, people haven't seen. And that's really uh, exciting. I, mean, I, I feel so grateful as an actor to have somebody who feel like kind of gets what you maybe have. Um, and then to see it when people come out, it, it's really exciting. So she says, hmm, I want to see these two doing dirty things. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> okay. From an acting perspective, also, she'll write many things that as an actor you look at and you are so uncomfortable on the page. And you curse and you say, I cannot I believe she wrote this. I cannot believe I have to do this. And it turns out to be some of your best work. Whatever happens in the process, it speaks to what Tony said. She sees something in you that you don't see in yourself, and you don't necessarily want to see it yourself. I <laughs> but obviously she's the boss, and you have to go and do the scene. And you don't know how you're going to do it, and then by the grace of God, you pull it out, and it turns out to be amazing. So he's really right about that, and I've experienced that firsthand, and I really agree with you. So the problems for you, I mean, you, you uh, have had such a, nice, a great long-term experience with Shonda. Now, I, I, there was a great moment backstage when we were all taking photos and you said, no, Carrie, you sit in the middle now because, you know, we're here for, we're here for Scandal um, to a large degree. It is premiering this week on Thursday. Woo-woo! Does it bring back memories for you when Grace was first starting, what that whole process was like? And, and are you excited for these two, for what they have ahead of them, these three? Sorry. I think... Uh, one of the most amazing things about Shop the Land is that it's provided so much exponentially for so many people. Um, it's given so many actors jobs. So many wonderful stories have been told across race, across sexual orientation, again, across age, young and old. Her stories employ everybody. Everybody gets a chance to shine. And in Hollywood, a lot of older actors don't work anymore. And on our show, we have older actors, almost every episode, get to come and shine again like they did in the 70s or 80s. It's just the number of shows that she has, the number of actors she employs, the number of different people that she gets to shine lights on is something I'm so proud of, uh, so proud to be a part of. And I think that that's why it wasn't so much about me that moment. It was about Shonda gives, everyone has their chance to shine on a Shonda Run show. At different points, we all get to have our moment to shine. And this is Carrie's moment to shine, and the whole cast moment to shine, and, and that's why we're here to celebrate them and, and the new, the new, with this love for everybody here. So, mm -hmm. so it's all, we're all part of the same thing here. <laughs> so, <laughs> back to the chemistry question, I'm curious with you, Ellen and Sandra, I mean, the fans are so invested in the relationships in which you play. I don't think that there's any way to drive that home. Uh, too hard. But, you know, they're, they're really invested. They're hanging on every scene. Uh, and Sandra, I think that last scene in the last episode just slaying people, um, where it was it was Christina and Owen in the bedroom, and he admitted that he had cheated. Um, so they really went through the ringer this year, and I want to get to that a little bit. But but you both you both I think have found some wonderful chemistry. Can you talk about just? Um, uh, how you feel that those relationships have developed on the screen and, and what it's like acting with your cast. Well, you know, it's such a blessing to be able to, and it's also a challenge, to be able to uh, play one character for eight years. And I don't know whether you remember in the pilot, but in the pilot, our characters were like the enemies. We didn't like each other. <laughs> and I think that's just the beginning of great romances. <laughs> <laughs> Why people are invested is because there's almost 200 episodes of seeing these two characters, just for example, just the Meredith and Christina storyline, um, spend time together, fight, get alienated from each other, are there to, to, to depend on each other, are there uh, cracking jokes with each other. 
And just to be able to come back again and again and again, um, I think creates that kind of bond. You know, and then at, at this point, it's it's really a family. Do you know what I mean? And family in all its in, in all its ways as well. And uh, that has also been like a, an amazing experience that I think very few actors are able to to um, experience. And I think you know now I feel television in some ways is getting shorter and shorter. And the fact that you know our show has been on for eight years, today, we're we're I, I, for me I'm acutely aware. That our show, which also shoots on film, is at the end of a of, a, of an era for, for television. Ellen, what about you? Can you talk about um, Meredith and Big Dreamy and, and just how that you feel that relationship has developed over the years and and what it's like working with Patrick now? I mean, you guys have, have been working together for quite some time. We have. I, I mean, I think you know what Sandra says is really true. And the thing with a, a run this long is like any family. You have your, your waves. You have waves where you get along, waves where you're sick of each other, and waves where people are going through things personally or whatever. You know, so what's an interesting blend of chemistry that, that is just lightning in a bottle, I guess, is Shonda and the writers are able to write in a way that moves with our relationships. And I think we're so comfortable with each other that we use what we have. We use what we bring. If I'm aggravated in a scene with Sandra about something else, about, you know, I don't know, a hole in my tie or in my car or something, I bring it to the scene. And Sandra accepts that. And we play the scene with what we have for each other, not what we expect. And I think the same is true of Shonda, who writes the episodes. She may have had something very different in mind when she wrote the scene. And the way we do it is completely different than what we envisioned, but yet it's honest and it's true and she lets it fly. At other times I've done things that she envisioned in a different way, and I wasn't in that mood that day. So she asked me to redo it. I kick and stomp and scream and yell, and I have to redo it ultimately. But it's all because she has a vision. So I think that when you're in a run, this, the great thing about the run being so long is you're so comfortable that you use whatever you have, and it's genuine, and it's real, and it's pissed off sometimes, and it's happy other times, and it doesn't necessarily go with exactly what's written in the scene, but it's always interesting when the scene says one thing and the actor's doing something else. It's contradictory, it's interesting, it's unexpected, and um, Ellen and I really keep each other going. Like, honestly, we really keep each other going. Ellen and I are actually very different. And, um, like, <laughs> I won't say. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, no, but it's, a, it's, it's actually just personally, we're, we're, we're very, very different. I think our outlook on life is kind yes, of completely different. different. Completely different. And so in that way, uh, we are able to keep each other in check, but also really tell the, the, the other person, um, uh, like from our perspective, right. like I, yeah. Relationships of all kinds, whatever the relationship is, whether it's a sexual friendship, whatever, they all take work, right. and you know, there's something that has to be nurtured and go through rough times and uh, and share the happy times and the joy. And relationships need to be nurtured for actors as well as you know people. So it's it's something that we work on all the time. For Terry and Katie, I am you know watching this uh, the real and private practice and. You know, the show obviously has lighter moments, and then you have these really, really dark moments. And I'm curious to both of you, when you do have those dark scenes, how do you prepare for them? I mean, you, you both can, can cry, and Katie, my goodness. I can't help myself but to cry along with you. Um, so how do you prepare for those scenes, and, and do you take it home with you? And how, do you how do you not let it affect your life when you're doing some of these darker scenes? Uh, for me, the, the great good fortune I've had throughout this process, it's on the page. I mean, you know, particularly with the episode that you showed the clip from, literally every second of that script was clear like that. And I had the wonderful good fortune of having Allison Lindy Brown, who I believe we've all worked with. Oh, yes. Yes. So, uh, extraordinary. Um, and, you know, for me, I took that home because it changed my life. Doing that episode, I still can't speak of it, and it sort of, you 
know, it's incredible to be on this panel talking about it. It, it, it affected me on such a deep level, with great pride I say that, that I felt used. I felt purpose as a human being telling that story because I know it really helped so many people. And I think no matter where you have to go as an actor, when you are held by a crew the way that I was, when you were trusted, the way Shonda trusted me to show up for Charlotte and to show up for my art, you're just, you show up and you do it, you know? So what you bring home is a consciousness, knowing that you've done something good, knowing that for me at least, when I chose to be an actor, one of the great goals for me was to affect change, to have people feel something from what I do. And if I have somebody write an episode like she wrote for me, then I better show up. So it doesn't matter what I take home. I'm going to find a way to shed it in its own natural process. And I got to live with that a full season, which was a commitment Shonda and I had agreed on because we knew that was the most articulate truth for someone that had been sexually assaulted and for the community and the entire cast to really respond to that as characters and rally around this human being. That's the story I want to be a part of, and that's the thing that she and the writers and the producers and the crew allowed me to do for a solid year, and that was an exceptional experience, and I really... I, I never saw this season coming, and I, I've had my guts ripped out again. <laughs> so it's, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's a wonderful surprise, and I, I welcome that darkness because there's always going to be light to go with it, you know? That's, that's part of the gift of what Shonda does in the world she creates. She really allows the audience to go on a ride with a character, as we've seen in every single one of these, and as we will see in your as I've seen, because I watch so. Um, <laughs> you know, you get to take a journey, and that's really great writing, that's great television, that's why people show up every week, and that's why people will move with you when your schedule changes. That's why people will follow everything that she is setting out for us to do, because they trust that they're going to be taken on that journey with a character. And, and again, you know, the light and shade is what makes a great writer and a great show, and I think she's got a good voice for that. I think we'll keep her. <laughs> you like to speak? Uh, yeah, but she said. Ask me a different question. She asked me that. I'll ask you a question on my mind. When are we going to get Addison a baby already? Oh. <laughs> Very much to watch things filmed. I'm incredibly busy, 
and I do a lot of, spend a lot of time writing. So I'm not really, go, I go to stage very rarely. I think you'd say like almost never. Only well, like during super important scenes. Super, super important scenes, I guess. And the ones that leave you feeling dirty. <laughs>
you want to get excited about something and feel like you've got to write this. And even then, I met her, and then it wasn't until, like, I was like, I'm going to write this pilot. And then a year went by, and I hadn't written anything, because I didn't think of anything okay. good. And then, like, it was like a year and a half later that I, I went to Mexico for four days and sat down and wrote the pilot. So I was like, I've got to get this done. We hit her. Yeah, I did. Uh, she was um, in a secret location, which is still exposed to this day. <laughs> and you, you, you actually purple. Yeah, I, I wrote the pilot. It took me like a year and a half to, like, figure out what I wanted to write and then write it. Because, you know, I, have, I already have two jobs. So it wasn't like I had a lot of time. <laughs> Because there were 
be like these knockdown drag mob arguments in the makeup trailer about like, he's awful, he's perfect, and people would be like throwing things at each other in the hair makeup trailer. My favorite part is just yeah. to touch it. She wouldn't talk to like, like, him. What? Yeah. I'm like, I was like, I'm a good father. <laughs>